diversity, that special word thrown around in liberal circles and starting heated debates, we talk a lot about it, but sometimes it's pretty difficult to understand its importance. You may be unable to grasp why it's important, and you may be afraid to admit that. That's okay because at one point I was too. What made me understand the importance and necessity of diversity is technology. Now, many people who know me, a couple of people in the audience, know about my passion for tech. This passion revolves around coding, coding things such as apps and websites. By getting involved in a variety of events and organizations related to coding, I've been able to meet a lot of people with the same passion as me. However, this past summer, I was able to work with a diverse team of coders that compelled me to understand why diversity, especially in tech, is important. Now, like many young coders, my team and I had dreams, aspirations of creating the next big app, of building the next Fortune 500 company. And so from those aspirations, we decided to take a look at the people who have already reached those dreams. Bill Gates of Microsoft, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook, Larry Page of Google, Travis Kalanick of Uber. These guys have a lot in common. First of all, they're all billionaires, check. Second of all, much of their wealth comes from their massively successful tech companies, check. Aside from their multi-billion dollar net worths, these leaders of the modern day tech revolution have one similarity, they're white. But oh wait, there's another similarity, they're male. Now, here's some statistics from major tech companies as to who exactly is involved in their workforce. First of all, these statistics refer to the tech employees specifically, meaning computer scientists, engineers, coders, people regarding those professions. 81% of Google's employees are male. 57% are white. Yahoo's numbers imply slightly greater diversity. 67% male, 45% white. Uber, which you may or may not know now because of how popular it's become, is fastly growing up the ranks as a popular tech company. However, they're still at 84.6% of their workforce being male and 46.2% white. Now, while the percentages of white employees are not as massive, it is clear that there's a gender gap in tech. Now let's zoom out from this part of the workforce and go into the CEOs and the corporate leaders of the tech industry. 70% of Google's leadership is white. 76% is white. 70% is male. Yahoo, 78% male, 72% white. Facebook has pretty much the same numbers as well. 73% male, 71% white. Now, what do these numbers mean? In other words, the diversity of the leadership is not reflective of the diversity in the workforce. Now, you can interpret these statistics and think that everything's just fine. But when I read these statistics, I recalled an event, specifically a hackathon I went to this past summer. Now, part of this TED Talk is to confirm that hackathons are as geeky as they sound. <laughs> um, but um, um, in, in full clarity, hackathons are events where anyone of any level of coding experience could come in and work on whatever they want. This could be collaborative projects with other people, and you can learn from other people about how to code or how to program, or you can simply test your skills. Now, at this specific event, it was at Spotify's New York City offices. So that was about 100 to 120 people all sitting around in a room slightly larger than this one. Every single one of them was sitting on either the floor or the couches, staring intensely at their laptops, energized by an obscene supply of Red Bull. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of drinking that right now. Um, <laughs> um, but aside from that, these people were incredible. They were all intelligent, and it was just great to see all of them with the same passion as me, sitting around and working together and coding. That's what I thought at first, but honestly, my perspective changed to here are all these white guys sitting here and coding. My friends and I were the only minorities in the room. I met a lot of intelligent people that day, people who shared the same passion as me. But what struck me the most was a group of girls sitting in the corner of the room. Now, there were young high schoolers from a program called Girls Who Code, which is aimed to teach STEM initiatives specifically and introduce girls into coding. Now. I'm going to a hackathon, so I guess you guys assume that I'm a nerd, but couple that with the fact that I'm a hormonal teenager 
and you can see exactly why I'd want to go talk to that group of girls right there. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, but I, I went over, I went over and spoke to them, and that turned out to be the most prolific hackathon I've ever been at. Do not take that out of context, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, most of the hackathon was working on music-related projects because it was Spotify's headquarters, I guess, to impress the CEO who was not there, by the way, so let him know that. But aside from that, we were working on projects related to anything from arts to more ri to writing to math. And so that was the most fun I ever had at a hackathon, and I was confused. What had made the experience different? Was working with people from completely different backgrounds somehow completely making my experience different? So for a while, I didn't understand what was happening until I started doing some research. I think that what I experienced at that hackathon is something that we all need to connect back to the tech industry. When I was at the hackathon, I met a lot of great people and I saw genius projects being created within hours. But in the same way, we hear about Silicon Valley and its success all the time. We hear about crazy multi-billion dollar companies being created out of thin air because of simple apps. We then use these simple apps on our phones. That touches us right in our pockets, <laughs> but we never really see the issues behind it. Society as a whole touts the power of its technology. Social media allows us to get whatever content we want as fast as possible. S search engines allow us to get whatever information we want within seconds. But as a result, we're clouded from understanding that there are so few minorities and women coding there. So you might be thinking, okay, so we think it's a problem. What about the tech industry itself? The tech in industry itself seems to kind of think it's a problem. And I know that's a weird thing to say. A software company, Atlassian, surveyed 1,400 tech workers across the US. Astonishingly, 83% of them said their company is already diverse. 94% gave a passing grade for diversity. Now you might be thinking, why do these statistics matter? And why does diversity matter? Because in the end, who cares about how diverse this industry is getting? How does it actually help make it better? Now, this is why it gets better. The Harvard Business Review talks about why diversity helps build upon innovation and creativity. These are two of the most sought after aspects and qualities of people when it comes to tech industries. Now, the Harvard Business Review specifically talks about how diversity unlocks innovation by creating an environment where outside of the box ideas can be heard. Forbes specifically states that diversity creates an environment where innovation can be fostered. Now, you might be thinking, once again, how does this actually help? Well, you, if you guys are familiar with Snapchat, you guys may know about its filters feature. Essentially, when you're, whenever you're taking a selfie on the app, you can apply a filter on your face that's generated by Snapchat. Now, this has landed Snapchat in some big, in some big news. So first of all, on the right, you can see a racist Asian face. Um, Snapchat specifically co coined that as the an classic anime face that resulted in a lot of back backlash and specific outrage on social media and publications. Snapchat repeated this again later on when they tried to create a Bob Marley filter to celebrate him, but many interpreted that as blackface. Now, these are just two incidents of a company that has been proven to be nearly full, nearly all white and male. Now, under that idea, there's another example of how diversity actually helps. So, in 2012, YouTube was creating a mobile app to record videos and then upload. Now, the main problem with that was the fact that when they uploaded it, for some reason, five to 10% of all videos showed up upside down. Google's designers were completely baffled. YouTube's designers did not know what to think of it. But after a while, they figured out one problem. Everybody on the team was right-handed. They realized that right-handed people and left-handed people record videos differently. And as a result, because the team was never able to predict that, we have this problem. So they quickly fixed it, but from there, Google started realizing just how crucial diversity is in all aspects. And from there, a, a ton of company pipelines have been created, uh, specifically for recruiting people of diverse backgrounds. 
Now, how could you expect, if you were working in a team full of right-handed people, how could you expect them to be sensitive to the, me to the needs of left-handed people? In the same way, how can the tech industry be expected to be sensitive to the needs of minorities and women when there's so little representation from these groups? So what are we doing about it? A variety of organizations have been started specifically in to introduce women and minorities into STEM education. Now STEM education is a platform that is be running right now in order to get young people interested in education. However, beyond that, companies are already starting their own pipelines in order to get more people into their companies. They're actively, di they're actively distributing pamphlets to historically black colleges, to people of all races and color. They're actively encouraging everybody to join in on their tech discussions. Now, lastly, lastly, you <laughs> lastly, McKinsey and Company conducted a survey uh, across a variety of tech companies where they specifically asked, when you guys increase diversity, what happened to your profits? And across all the companies they surveyed, it appeared that most often there's a linear relationship. For every 10% that racial and ethnic diversity increased in a board, so did the profits by 0.3%. Now, 0.3% may not sound like a lot, but if you have a billion dollars in profit and you're going up 0.3%, I don't know about you, but I, I like that amount of money right now. <laughs> um, and the same thing goes for gender diversity. For every 10% that gender diversity increases, profits and margins increase by 0.4%. Now, from there, you might be asking, what is this TED Talk about? I understand that diversity is a major issue that we're trying to solve, and that is true. Diversity is a major issue that we're trying to solve. But in the tech industry specifically, we were able to identify this problem because people decided to come and speak out about it. People decided to say, hey, there are very few minorities here, there are very few women here, and they decided to talk about it. Now, in the same way, you may think that your industry is diverse. You may think your business, your place of work is diverse. You might think a, var a wide var variety of cultures is represented. But I urge you to pause for a second and take a good hard look at just who's there because the results may surprise you. Thank you.